to the word that we heard on Sunday. Pastor A preached a really good message. It so was good. so, it was so awesome. good, right? It was so good. And uh, he touched on a lot of points that I can't wait to get into with you guys. So I'm really excited We're to ready. jump into that. And that message was called, It's Not a Mistake. So just right there, you already know that God is moving. God is talking to us. It's not an error that you're even here tonight listening to the breakdown right now that you were listening to the message on Sunday. It was so loaded. And he started in 1 Kings. And it's a story of Elisha and Elijah and a transfer of the mantle. And just right there, if you're listening and you don't know church language, which I, I didn't know church language either when I started. I'm like, a mantle. Um, it's one of the things I was talking about. You know, the with. fireplace? <laughs> legit. I, le it's, a, it's a real response. Like, are you talking about a furnace, a fireplace? Like, oh, a mantle is about to get cozy. It's not. Leave your Netflix and chill to continue watching this. <laughs> But uh, no, I thought it was it was a crazy message to think about how Elisha is out in the field and this guy Elijah comes out of nowhere and he throws a coat on him because if I leave Target and someone throws a coat on me, I definitely don't know what that means. I'm like... Uh, Especially right now during you don't want somebody to throw a coat on you. First of all, it's <laughs> going to sanitize like, that thing. <laughs> I'm going to just assume it's like those people try to like cough on you at the grocery store. <laughs> you threw a mask on me a new level of offended I'm gonna be after I leave Target but uh no I, I started thinking about it some more and I'm like I truly feel like I would be confused I wouldn't have the the thought to be like Elisha and be like oh I know I have to leave this place like if I left the store somebody threw a coat on me I was at work and somebody threw a coat on me I don't know what that means and so I was actually thinking about this, and Pastor Christian is with us. Come on, give Come it on, up. PC. Give it up. Hey, um, hey. Thanks for having me. I am so glad that you're here. You're the right person because I have a loaded question for you <laughs> about mantles, that's for sure. Um, in this message, Pastor Abe gives us three points, how to respond. And one of the responses is to commit to the mantle. And I was thinking about that and uh, you being a pastor here, when did you know that that mantle was being thrown on you, that a new call was has come upon you? Like, I'm thinking that for Elisha, he never forgot that he was in the field working and a coat was thrown on him. So I, get, I hear, no offense, I'm not trying to shade any pastors, <laughs> but I hear pastors say all the time, like, I just knew I was called to be a pastor. I just felt it. But Elisha was turning a new leaf, and I don't think he ever forgot that moment. And something so dramatic as going from never thinking about church, I wasn't sure I was called to church, to being a pastor. Like, I just think you wouldn't forget that moment. So what was that like for you? What was that aha mantle moment? I think uh, when we read that story of Elisha in the field, I don't think he ever planned to spend the rest of his life being a farmer. I, I had just imagined him sitting behind those oxen, getting mud in his face, getting pooped on, you know, <laughs> sweating under the sun, praying and believing there was more for his life. And yeah. when, when the prophet came and threw the mantle on him, or it was the signal that his life was about to change, he was already ready for a change. And for myself, I was like that. I was out in the world doing my own thing, but I always knew, I always felt there was something more for my life. So when my chance came, when it was thrown on me, when I was asked, do you want to come and join? I took, I took the chance. Because I was already ready for it. And I think a lot of people read that verse and, and feel like somehow God's going to like just one, two, three, you're it without any preparation, without you knowing anything, just out of the blue. The Bible is very clear that only that people come to God because he calls you. So yeah, he was being said. called in his heart. He may not have known exactly what or when yeah. or why, but he knew he was built for more. Mm -hmm. So when it happened, he was ready to answer. I think that's like, that is 
so important because it's not just the mantle being thrown on you, but it's the response that you have in return. Because he could have just decided, like, no, this is not the direction that I'm going because I, I don't want to leave this stuff behind. But as we read in First Kings, he did. He just dropped his stuff right away. And I guess my second question is, you guys have stuff that you had that you knew you had to just drop off right away. Were there things that you're like, no, I'm not, I'm not ready to leave that thing. Like, what would be that thing that you just didn't want to leave behind? I'm looking at Abe smiling. <laughs> I'm looking at Abe smiling right here, and I'm like, what's that thing? And I, I think those things are the things we don't want to talk about. Like that thing that we don't want to talk about. Our comfort zone. Probably. I'm a Christian, and like I always follow God, and I never did anything wrong. No, like what was that thing that? You were like, maybe I don't want to bring that up yet. Yeah, I don't think that it was necessarily something to think of that was negative, but it was definitely something that had become routine for me. And uh, moving away from where I had grown up for like 20-something years, and it was, a, it was a great upbringing, and it was awesome, and it was you know surrounded with beautiful people. But for me, moving away and then eventually to San Diego, you know, almost 10 hours away, that was one of the biggest things that I've ever had to, to let go of. And not because it was necessarily bad and, and, and sinful, but it was just something that um, I had been doing for a very long time. And like Pastor Christian said, like inwardly, there's something was like, there's, there's more. You know, there, I know that God has something more for me. I don't know what it is yet, but I, I know it's there. And so I would say that that's one of the biggest things that I've had to like separate from. And I love how, Elisha actually asked Elijah, can I go say goodbye to my family? Because I think of the story of Jesus where he says, you know, the young ruler says, you know, let me, you know, what do I have to do to follow you? And I feel like Elijah knew, like, this is not necessarily an unhealthy thing for you, but there is more for you. And so, yes, go say bye to those things that have developed you and have equipped you to be able to be prepared to come follow into what you need to step into next. So I would, that's something that I would think of. I mean, there are some things, some... So, he doesn't want to say right now. You know. I'm waiting for that. I was like, okay, we're going to get into something juicy here? Just ask me later. We can talk off the chat. Off the chat. We can we can talk. Stay tuned for the after after party. No, um, I think that it's important to note that, yeah, they, they could either be like these dramatic, simple things or something as, as common as like complacency or routine or things that they're just not objects, but mentalities. Um, it, it, it is a lot deeper than just like the, the plow representation is like an object, but I think that's really cool. And, um, you know, moving into like his second point, because we get, we go from committing to the mantle to carrying the mantle at this point. You're like, all right, I, I put this, ja I got this jacket. Like, how am I gonna carry this? And Pastor Abe talks a lot about serving um, and when I hear him talking in the sermon, I basically gather that Elisha is going from this high place, like he's kind of owning his own stuff, or, or he's reached the highest place that he's going to in the setting that he's in. And now he's going into this low place, you know, quote unquote, low place, right, of servitude unto Elijah as they travel. And I, I want to hear... Kind of again from, from you, Abe, um, is there ever a time where you dismissed serving, where, like invisible tasks, or it, you know, quote unquote invisible, right? Like, like they're not stage-like tasks or, or that you got sick of it and you were like, you know what, these little things, they're just, they're not that important to me. I have my eye on either being on the platform, like I feel like people come into church and they like want to do this. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to fake the funk. People come to church and they're like, you know, I'm a great communicator. I think I should be on the stage. And they're just like, why don't you set up a chair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, it's, it's so cool that that's actually the question that we <laughs> kind of, the point she asked what spoke to you the most. And uh, the day after Father's Day, I actually got officially laid off from my job. And so even before that, I had stopped working like March 17th, I think it was. So I became a stay-at-home dad. I became a homeschool teacher. And everything that had been kind of fueling me as far as my purpose in terms of my job and, and just other areas um, radically changed. And it went from being like, I'm serving this incredible nonprofit organization every single day in the communities of where it is 
to being like, nope, you're actually going to wake up every morning. You're going to kick <laughs> your, you're going to cook your kids breakfast, <laughs> kick your kids. Maybe that happens every once in a while. Kids. <laughs> cut that out. Three o'clock. Okay, let's cut that out. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> <laughs> cook your kids breakfast. You're going to cook your wife breakfast. You're going to make each other coffee. And then after everyone eats, you're going to do the dishes. And then you're going to put your kids into their schoolwork. And then you're going to take them outside to do your, to, to take them outside to use their energy. Then you're going to make their lunch. You're going to make your wife lunch. And then you're going to clean that all up. And that became the norm for me since March 17th. That has become the norm for me. And so what Pastor Abe said about God wants to do great things through your common situations, I think for, and I'll just speak for me as a male, sometimes I think we may, may think like, ah, I'm the provider of the home, or but my wife actually works. And so we've, we've never had to kind of be like, this is your role, that's my role. We've always kind of done it together. But it's been for the last four months like me because she's, kept working like you know and her her job hasn't stopped matter of fact it's actually gotten more intense so I've become like man like I'm just become the stay-at-home dad lately and for me and for maybe other men who are like kind of fighting like what's changing the world right now is like I want what used to be and it's like no like this is what you need to carry right now and I know who God has called me to be. I believe in the things that God has gifted me to use to help build his church and into the communities of of where our church is planted. But right now, the practicality of that is serving my home and it's serving my wife. It's, it's serving those, those common, what people would think common and don't get me wrong. People who do this every single day would be like, no, that is not a common thing, but it used to be common, you know, for me, because it's not something that I used to do. So, um, for me, it's just understanding, like, life is not always these big spiritual dynamics of a situation. Like, God empowers you through his spirit to equip you to live out your calling while at the same time doing practical things that he's developing yeah. you, he's refining you, he's shaping you. So that when that moment comes, it's like, hey, now you're ready. Come follow me. Well, I think, like, it's, it's really cool because I want to add to that. I feel like. You know, and not not to correct, but I always think of, like, the when is really an if. Because we always think, like, when I do this, I'm going to get somewhere. Mm-hmm. And, like, that could be the thing that you you are with forever. And, and I think a lot of the times in church, people want to get into leadership. And, like, this is a stepping stone to another place in the, in the church family or the church, I, I don't know, a church ladder, if that even makes <laughs> sense. I don't know. But I feel like if God asked you to serve your children and your wife for the next 20 years and that was it, like, I feel like that's where God's trying to catch us and be like, that would be the greatest 20 years of your life to serve God by serving the thing that he asked or tasked you with. Um, so I just feel like it's, it's crazy because we're humans. So I feel like we're always dismissing like little things. Right. You're like, well, it's not that important or it's it's not cool. I love that Pastor Abe said that in his message. Like, just because you don't feel like you can brag about it doesn't mean it's not a blessing. Right. It's that Instagrammable. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, was doing this cool thing. And honestly, I'm so guilty for it. <laughs> I'm so guilty for it. I love something that looks cool. But you know what? God really checked my heart in the message because yeah. there are some things that are hard in my life where I'm like, yeah, I thought that was not a blessing. But it kind of is. It's a part of the process. So I, I don't know. This message was super loaded, by the way. Great. Right? Yeah, that was great. That was great. You know, Matthew eleven thirty says this, and Jesus said it. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I think oftentimes um, I find that Christians think that somehow it should be really hard. And so um, it's task oriented. They want to, yeah. you know, I, I should preach, you know, which would be the most scariest thing, right? right. And I've been. I'm pa- so nervous right here. <laughs> I, I've been a pastor a long time. Very rarely do I get to take the mic and actually preach because I used to think that that's what it was about. Yeah. And it's in the, the little things, yeah. it's in the small things. And with Elijah, Elisha, he was so used to putting the you know the big heavy yoke on the oxen and getting his plow out. It was like this hard, you know, sweaty work. But I've learned over um, you know the years in my experience, either you will carry that light load. It's either 
uh, you carry his purpose or you're going to carry your issues. Good. Yes. And my issues weigh a ton. Yeah. Man. But he promised that so his good. yoke and his burden would be light. It's beautiful. So either I'm going to pick up his purpose or I'm going to pick up my issues. And it yeah. comes with a ton of tissues. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Man. And is that's that the next message? <laughs> that's Preview the, to next week? And that's what Pastor Abe said. Is in another way, he also said, you know, do you want to carry your mess or do you want to carry my mantle? Yeah. So, like, we choose what we want to carry. Like, and, and it's not to say that as we develop, like, we're not going to feel a season of, of like, um, refining. But when we carry stuff that, like, is our baggage and not his purpose, it feels oh, it's heavy. the weight is yeah. massively different. Yeah. Massively different. Absolutely. A thousand times would rather exchange all my issues yes, for Lord, the me. relief that Jesus is going to give us. Come on now. If you're at home, you know, just drop give it to him a little right emoji now. in the chat, <laughs> lifted hands. But uh, no, I, I really, I really like that. And I feel like it's so important for us to really grasp these little things, um, small obedience. That was what Pastor Abe said is your big break is found in small <laughs> obedience, like yeah. being faithful in the little, like Elisha was so faithful to be plowing his property, just farming. He, although he was, you know, hoping like Pastor Christian said, like it, it may or may not have happened, but in that moment it did. And when that exchange was made available, I feel like you just jump. You know, there's no uh, plan B, or so you just have to decide if you want to have a plan B. Vanessa, did you ever have a plan B? Like, you were like, I'm going to follow Jesus, but, like, suddenly now I don't want to because I'm having to either give this up or be somebody else. Hopefully it wasn't me. Like, I was <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't you, babe. Um, no, I've, I've never really had um, a plan B. Um, you know, one of the things Pastor Abe um, said that really stuck out to me was, um, you know, we pray for, we pray for things. We pray for vision. We pray for, you know, these dreams that we have, but what we really, God really gives us is a perspective. Um, and so I never had a plan B. I like knew what I wanted and, and I prayed for it. And, um, one thing that really stood out when he said that, like it hit me to the core because, you know, we have, especially as women, we have these like dreams and I want to marry someone that looks like this and I want kids that look like this and their teeth have to be like this. And, you know, and this it's like, it, it did turn out to be Abe. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. But then we get, you know, those blessings. And there's a saying that says, you know, um, remember the days that you prayed for what you have now. And, you know, and so you go through um, life with these blessings that God's God gives you um, the vision that he carried out for you. And now I have my beautiful children. I have my husband. But, you know, no one gives you a manual that says, like, here's how to take care of your kids during COVID-19, you know. Um, and it's not until, and so that's where it really ministered to me about being in the middle. So, um, no, there was no plan B. I knew what I wanted, and I stayed the path. But, it, you know, it can get wearing I never wished for a plan B. I just was like, God, this, this, is, this could be a bit much. Um, but it's in the middle that he um, gives us perspective. And um, the key is, you know, what really hit me at the core was, you know, um, it, it can be tiring and it can be kind of like, well, God, like, I know I asked for this, but you didn't really give me the manual, like, for when this happens. But you know what? I know your spirit is in me and, and I'm going to ask you every day for help. Um, um, because I'm grateful for, you know, the vision that you've blessed me. I had this vision, you blessed me with it, so thank you. But, um, yeah, it's in the middle where you get that perspective um, to move to the end. And really, we were talking about this on the way here, there really is no end as believers. There's always a middle. So um, if you're planning on a plan B, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just hang in the middle. And ask God to just continue giving your perspective. So, yeah. I think that's really good. I feel like that's something I have been thinking about these last few days. Like, when I get over this hurdle or obstacle, then I've got probably something else to encounter. And that's really It never how, ends, yeah. Yeah. You grow as a person. And Pastor Christian and I had been talking about becoming 
and how that doesn't really end and when it kind of no. does <laughs> This is it was really cool because we were kind of discussing backstage, backstage talk, the extra extras coming up. But uh, no, we were actually talking about how this story plays out. Like if you backtrack in the scripture and I kind of want that to be shared with us, with you guys, because we were talking about how Elijah ended up giving Elisha the mantle. I just want you to elaborate on how that kind of came to be because it was really that these, these, you know, basically treasuring those small things, being obedient, becoming, just fell to the wayside. And then God swooped in and did something else. So will you just tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, without going into a two-hour sermon. Um, <laughs> preach. So I'm going to cut me, him off. Let me paraphrase and make it really short. Elijah was given a task. He was supposed to give a message to Jezebel. And uh, Jezebel responds saying, I'm going to kill you. And he freaks out. He's, he goes and he runs and he hides and he throws himself in a cave. And he was begging God, kill me. I'm a nobody. I'm from nobody. Nobody knows me. I don't have a pedigree. I don't have a network. I don't have anybody on my Rolodex. Just kill me. And God does these miracles and he causes a storm outside of the cave and lightning and all this stuff. He's just trying to get his attention. And he's like, no, 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 I'm nobody. Uh, just find someone else. And at the end of the argument, God's like, cool. I'm going to find someone else. I need you to go to this field, and you're going to find a guy there who has already been preparing himself. And so you have to remember that the purposes of God will always happen. Yeah. We either join in with what God's doing or we don't. But he's going to get what he wants done. And so he ends up having to pick a guy as his replacement and then train him. So I always I imagine when I, when I read that passage about that exchange where he walks in the field and he casually looks at the guy. And he's like, all right, fine. He takes off his robe and he kind of throws it all nonchalant and then kind of walks away. Yeah, but, you're not going to happily just give your stuff over to like a successor. I, I think he was <laughs> hoping, take my job. I think he was hoping that Elisha would say, I don't want this. Because wow. he had to go pick his own replacement. Yeah. And then if you look, if you follow the story and you see their relationship, Elijah is constantly dogging out Elisha. He would tell him, hey, you stay here. I'm going to go have a meeting and I'll be right back. And he would bail to another town. He was always, like some of y'all in the church. <laughs> <laughs> he was always trying to like <laughs> ditch God's instructions and God's purpose. The problem is that you can never outrun the call of God. He's still going to find you wherever you go. And then you'll have to repeat the same over all over again. <laughs> the Bible says that the call of God is without repentance, which means he's not sorry. He's not going to change his mind and he's not going to reverse himself. And so if he's yeah. called you, he's called you. Wow. We are the ones that have to get on board with what he's doing. Right. Wow. That's good. I hope that speaks to some of you guys. I feel yes. like. I, you know, there have been times that I don't, I'm like, what, what is the mantle? Where's my mantle? And I feel like that happens when you're kind of still first joining church and being a part of it. Because I, I, I really don't think you're going into church thinking, what is this mantle that's come upon me? You're like, God, I just need something from you. But we don't really know what that looks like. And I think if you're, you're listening to all the wisdom here. You're like, well, you're, you're going to know what it looks like because it's so dramatically different than what you have now. And I love how Pastor Abe said in the beginning, this message was so good, guys. If you didn't hear it on yes, Sunday, yes. I just want to shamelessly plug it right now. you got to go back Watch to the it right YouTube. Now. Go to the YouTube. Yeah, go to the YouTube. But he's, and Facebook. And, and Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, check it out for all you Facebook users. But uh, he starts saying that, it made sense in Elisha's heart, even if it didn't make sense in his mind. And the, the, the text doesn't actually say it didn't make sense in his mind. Like, I, I feel like we just, because God is an understanding God, and when you're human, you're like, I, I don't technically know what it means, but I feel like this is from God. I, I get a sense that this is God because only God could do it. And I, I, I just want to know, maybe from Vanessa, there was a point where you, you knew, like, that was from God in your heart, the way Elisha would know that that mantle wasn't just from this guy named Elijah, who didn't say anything to him but threw a jacket on him, but that you were like, that's from God. Yeah, I just, um, 
I would always feel it really deeply inside and in my mind, and it just would never, it just will not leave. Um, yeah, it, it's pretty heavy when you know, you know. And again, talking about the spirit of God living within you, you don't need to question what that voice is or what that um, knowing is. When the spirit of, of God lives in you, I mean, he's, he's processing in your mind. He's telling you, he's feeding you, and he's telling you, like, no, this is over your life. And you may not see it right now. I know you feel it because you feel my presence. You feel me in, you feel me in your heart. So even if you don't have it visually right now in front of you, just hold on to my spirit, hold on to my words, hold on to my word. It's there. And, and you just know, definitely. Wow. That's amazing that I, I feel like if that was any indicator to you, confirmation to you out there that God is speaking to you and God is asking you to just move forward into something that doesn't make sense. Like, here's your flag. If I had a flag, I would wave it to let you know. But uh, the last point that Pastor Abe talked about was catching the mantle. And I love when he says, if you want to catch the mantle, you have to be in the right place at the right time. And I think that's so crazy because divine appointments happen everywhere all of the time. And that's something that I think one of those little things that we're like, hey, this meeting, it's a divine appointment. It's this place where God's presence shows up because we're here to talk about these points. And so I love that. I love that. I feel like when I know that I'm listening to God and I'm going to get to a place, I know that God's going to meet me there. Yes. But some of those things, I, I just want to touch on like, Pastor Christian, how did you know, like, what was that place for you spiritually or literally, like a physical place? Like, I feel like when you meet your spouse, I'm not married, but, but, but I feel like <laughs> Almost. No. you have to be in a place, like a literal physical place, also the right place spiritually. Yeah, you and can't he, marry yourself. You, there's got to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Pastor Abe used this verse, and, and I want to read it. It's Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, uh, <laughs> chapter 9, verse 11, and it says this. The fastest runner doesn't always win the race. The strongest warrior doesn't always win the battle. The wise sometimes go hungry. The skillful, skillful are not necessarily wealthy. And those who are educated don't always lead successful lives. And this is the key. It is all decided by being in the right place at the right time. You don't catch a mantle or a future or, or a call hey, by accident. It's, it says it right here. It's all decided. You have to decide in your heart and your mind to be the right person and to be, in the, to be in the right place. And a lot of times people are waiting around for someone to say, tag, you're it. Oh, no, Alyssa, it's your time now. I got something for you to do. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't work that way. Yeah. If you have to say yes before it ever, you're even asked. You have to say yes before you're ever asked. So you, when you ask about like, how did you, how did you know when you saw your spouse? When I met my wife, I was sitting on a camera at a, on a Sunday service, right at the back. Shout out to our cameraman. Where are you at? At the back. Is of, that why you're doing this job? You're trying to catch, of the catch your future wife. Doing what I decided to do, and that was to serve God. I I thought in the beginning I was going to be. You know, everyone asked me to preach. My pastor asked me to go sweep the parking lot go clean toilets, go be a cameraman. But I had decided that I was going to do and be wherever I needed to be. So yeah. I was already looking when the, when the, when the, when the opportunity yes, came. So I'm on the camera, and I look <laughs> over to my right, and in <laughs> through the door comes this gorgeous chair. Shout out, Pastor Ann. The hair was flowing Woo. and flipping back, and I knew on, brownie point. that I knew <laughs> I was being asked. I was being shown my future. Because I had already decided that yeah. I was going to be in the right place. And that right place isn't necessarily physical. It's mentally and spiritually. Yeah. Where are you with God? Yeah. Where is your relationship with him? Yeah. We all want the good stuff, but we don't want the relationship that comes along with it. Yeah. So it, it all boils down to being. It's being in the right place, becoming, and, be, and, and literally embodying who you need to be. I, I didn't have any skill. I didn't have any, uh, you know, like cool things to say. 
But I just, but I was readying myself. But what did you say to her? Oh, no, that's a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> next episode, next episode. I was like, but how was that camera recording that day? <laughs> right on past Dan? Actually, it wasn't that good because I had turned the camera and because I had a headset Tell on. Me, I was just joking and, when no, no, I said that. I was asking, and I was asking the director at the time, Tony Winnie, so I was like, I was like, Uncle Tony, who is that? And he's like, you're on screen. And the whole camera was on the main screen, oh, and it was flipped oh over, oh shining on And I got in trouble for that. Oh, Shameless oh, ministry plug hey. to the production team. Yeah, the whole Instagram it's filter was all, it, all nee, 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 with the hearts <laughs> in it. Right? It was, I was like, but the, the point was this. You don't catch mantles by accident because the call of, call of God is not by accident. Yeah. It's on purpose. And so when you are who you need to be at the right time, you will catch what you're supposed to catch. Yeah. It wasn't like, how did you get in here? Uh, how did you make it here? Who, That's who, good. You know, like, who do you know? Yeah. It's never yeah. about who you know. Come it's on. about who, if you know him. Who yeah. you know. <laughs> so it's not by accident. And that's the biggest uh, thing this weekend with Pastor Abe's preaching that really hit me. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes you ask yourself, am, am, should I be here? Yeah. Am I a fraud? Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe the, my time is over, and God spoke clearly to me this weekend through Pastor A. That is absolutely not true. I am not here by accident. Yeah, I was. I am here on purpose, not my purpose, but His purpose. Yeah, yeah that's and if cool. you're watching, honestly, you're not watching this by accident. If you right. tuned in, it's not just a moment that you were just here searching the web and you found Heart Revolution Church, the breakdown. But you were meant to hear this, and I, I feel like. Uh, as Christians, we love to be like, you're chosen, you are loved. But we don't always focus in on the magnitude or the weight of your life being predestined by God. And that's what that means, like you're chosen. Exactly what Pastor Christian said, without, it's without repentance. Like that doesn't change. It's not merit-based. Um, It's not based on, like, you're not going to elevate yourself into this position. Like, you could be lame, okay? You could be, no, I want to say, I'm not just, I feel like it it felt like I was addressing just, like, the guys, but you could be a lame girl, too. But, uh, no, it's not, it's, you could just be like, no, I don't feel like doing that. And God's like, I'm going to, like you said, you just can't get away from it. I feel like when God is talking to you, you're like, it's definitely in my head yeah. or in my heart, but it's not me because I definitely don't want to do some of those things. Yeah. Totally. Or I wouldn't want to do them on my own. So I, I just think to focus in on what that really means when you have a call on your life, it's unavoidable. And you could try all you want to run from it. I mean, it was there every time you were like, I feel like this is what it is, but I don't know about it. Yeah. Um, there was a, 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 a time in my life in my early 20s where I actually tried to run away from it. I, I really did. I was living a very, very reckless life. And, um, you know, I, I got a, a hooked on a, um, a specific drug named Molly. Is, that's what we call them. Oh, shoot. And uh, it was like a three-year, like, I don't know what that spin. Is. <laughs> and I was just, like, going down the, the Alice in Wonderland rabbit oh, hole. Yeah. You know what I mean? And But there was definitely a time where I was like, not so much that I, I didn't know if this this was what it was, but it was so much like I don't I don't want it anymore. Like I don't want to I, I don't want to pursue this anymore because the calling for me landed on my spirit when I was 15, and I didn't go through this experience until I was like in my early 20s. But when that happens, and whatever the calling, whatever the purpose, whatever the mantle is for your life, there's this marking that happens on your spirit through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It's almost like this tattoo. Like, it, you're not going to be able to, to take it away. You know what I mean? God, this press Christian, like, the call of God is without repentance. Like, what God has called specifically for you to do, you can try to run away from it. You can try to sin your way out of it. But God loves you so much that he's going to be patient with you and he's going to grace you so that you can live out what he's designed for you to specifically carry. Um, and I think it just comes with that choosing every single day to be able to say, God, just here I am. Here's my life. Mold me, shape me. Even now in, in, in this season that I'm in, um, there was one night I was just so overwhelmed. I was like, I, I don't I can't do this anymore. And so I was up really late one night praying. And our the, my daughter's school has this app that you were tracking your kids like schoolwork on. And I felt like the Holy Spirit led me like 
you need to look back on all of these moments you've had with your daughter. And so I started scrolling through all the different pictures and the videos that we had uploaded together. And I, I just like let out this extreme, like I had to cover my face in the pillow because I was bawling so hard wow. that my family would have woke me up. But it was coming from a place of gratitude and thankfulness and thinking back from those places when I was in my 20s and until now into fatherhood, it's like it all it happens in the middle. You know yeah. what I mean? It all it's all a part of it. It's all a part of the journey. And I think as Christians, we can look at life and be like, OK, I got my promotion. Now this is where it stops. And it's like because no, because then, you know, like, OK, there's got to be something more. And it's like, no, no, no. Just steward what's in your hand right now. And I heard a pastor say once, like, we asked God for a miracle. We want a tree. And he's like, OK, cool. Here's the seed. Go put it in the ground and then figure out how to take care of it along the way. And that's the middle. And so I think it's just um, believing in it, believing in it, hoping in it, leaning into it and just allowing the journey to, to lead you through it um, every single day. It's really powerful. I think um, as you're speaking and we're talking more about like mantle roles, uh, I don't even know if that's correct, but uh, honestly, you know, we're having this conversation because we are so distorted sometimes as Christians that a mantle is a title. Right. And so when right. Abe's speaking, I'm, I'm thinking about how fatherhood is a mantle. Like it's like a role, but it's, it's a, it's, something that you're called to because uh, some people they're not called to be uh right. to have kids they don't want to have kids they feel compelled to be in the workforce doing something else and so I, I think it's so special that it wasn't that god spoke to you and told you to look at the work you've been doing at your job like you're still valuable because you had a job at one right. point or that you're so smart but he told you to look back yeah. and reflect on the time that you spent with your daughter and I think that just goes to show just how much God is doing in those little little moments that they, they were the ones that <laughs> added up. Like, look at what you had. Um, and I know, Pastor Christian, you were, not to put him on the spot, y'all, but he was definitely wilding out before this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like A told this story, so we definitely need to, we definitely need to add on to that. But no, I, I feel like not, I feel like when you go from one place that is so on the Strain. left yeah. field to the right side and you're just like only God could do it. Yeah. I I want to I just want to know more about that feeling when when you reflect on the days that you gave up or gave in and then had to go back. You know, how did you continue to focus on like no, I'm predestined. Like I'm going to fight the feeling that is to, you know, Pastor you actually said the enemy comes to tell us, like, no, don't do that because then you don't get to the much. Like, don't be faithful in the yeah, little. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't take that little step forward, be, you know, because he's trying to distract us. How did you stay on track or get on track if that was your journey? Um, you know, over the years I've been on track, I've been off track. <laughs> and whether it's left field or right field, the only thing that never changes in that equation is, is you. Wherever you are, that's where you're at, right? <laughs> and wherever I'm at, God promised me would be. So how I stay on track is I have to remind myself literally every day that I am called for a purpose. I don't know what that purpose is today is exactly in like the title or, or the job or, or the function because I remind myself it's not about that. You know, the thing about the man or this coat, it's not about the fibers that are in the coat. It's, it's about the heat that's in between the fibers mm. and the person. And that's the space where the Holy Spirit Resides. Man. So it's not about wow. the title. It's not Woo. about the position. It's not about the job. It's in that space between that thing and where you're at, where the Holy Spirit lives, where you have the relationship. It's it's that little space in between. And if you can find the little space in between and live there, then it doesn't matter what the color of the coat is. Because when you read the scripture, it didn't say, and he threw an Armani. Yeah, yeah, you know, some chinchilla. I some, wish he would, though. <laughs> It, you know, he threw up some chinchilla or some meat. It, it wasn't about it. It was about the space between the fabric and the man. So good. And if you can live in those little areas, and those are the unseen areas. Those are the yeah. places nobody sees. It's when you're at home alone. And I haven't always done it right. And But I get back up and I try again. And I think, I think that's where I, for myself, that's where I, I get the most victory. And that's... 
uh, where I get my you know, so-called power from. It's in the saying, all right, I screwed up, but I'm going to do this again, and I'm going to keep fighting for it. Because like Elisha, I, I burned my yoke, and I chopped up my oxen, and I used it as fuel for my future. Mm-hmm. So in that story, he, he, he took his present, he chopped up his, his plow, he's lit it on fire, he took his oxen, he chopped it up, he made a barbecue out of it, and he used it as fuel for the future. And so instead of, you know, bemoaning the past or trying to hide it, I have no problem talking about it Good. because yeah. it propels me to my future. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and I think um, it, it's, it, it goes to show, you know, you really can't, we were just talking about this, um, but you really can't get away from your past. It, it's all, it all comes together, you know, not to be cliche, but God really does work those things out. So that they add up to that moment, that right place, that right time for it all to come together. And I'm really, I'm just really grateful. I don't know if you guys out there have ever just been <laughs> grateful to God because yes. if my purpose, if your purpose, if all of our pur- your purpose at home was not predestined, like right. God would have definitely changed his mind halfway through. Right. Like if that's how somebody did something, you know, I I think sometimes my boss might have changed his mind <laughs> halfway through, but. No, I, I, I'm just really grateful. I love the conversation that we get to have here at the breakdown. And yes. again, like I want to plug uh, the service into you. Sundays, we have church online. You can watch from home on your computer if you're at work in the mornings. And then we do church at night. We just gather here at our San Diego campus, and it's a really great time. I'm so glad that you joined us this evening. It was such a fun time talking yes, to you guys. It was. Yeah, Vanessa, yeah, yeah. Pastor Christian here. I want to give it up to you guys. Thank you for being amazing. Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you for being amazing. I'm so glad. This was our first show, guys. <laughs> I'm like, yo, you guys got a really good message out there. Tune in next week. It's going to be on Wednesdays. We love you. We can't wait to see you here on Sunday. Mm-hmm.